Uh, I'm very glad to be here today and welcome. Uh, please thank you for to attend this session. Um, so this session is about Mac Ruby. It's a version of Ruby for that runs for the Mac, especially for the Mac. And my name is Laura Sansonetti, and I work for Apple in the uh, the core operating system team. And and forgive my horrible French accent, please. <laughs> and um, so today's agenda is very simple. First, I will just give an overview of what Apple and Ruby is doing. And then I will focus on Cocoa development with Ruby because it's very important. It's a very important feature that we want to promote. And then I will do some demos, and then there will be some time for questions, I hope. And we really love Ruby at Apple. And Ruby started uh, its life in Mac OS X since 2002. It was 1.6, one of the first versions. And then it was updated. And more recently, in Leopard, we are shipping Ruby Cocoa, Ruby Gems, Rails, and which is, which is kind of cool because since Leopard, we are uh, supporting Cocoa development with Ruby. So you can write Cocoa application in pure Ruby, and we provide compatibility across uh, future OS releases. So if you write an application now, uh, it won't break with the next versions. And for the future, uh, we would like to ship Rails 2.x, whatever, the latest version, uh, passenger, and we are interested in MacRuby, of course, which is the main topic of this talk. And our goal is to make uh, Mac OS X the best platform for Ruby developers. And to do that, we need to make Ruby a first-class citizen in Mac OS X. And to do that, we need to make Ruby a first-class Cocoa programming language in Mac OS X. And this is a very uh, important part, I think. And why, do you, why, why are, we, are we focusing on Ruby right now? It's, it's because uh, Cocoa, the, the big framework of Mac OS X that you use to write Cocoa applications, is mostly written in Objective-C. And Ruby and Objective-C are conceptually very similar uh, because they both inherit from Smalltalk. So they are both dynamic languages. You can you send messages. You can reopen classes at runtime. You can create new classes at runtime and things like that. But the key is that Ruby is purely interpreted while Objective-C is compiled. So it's really cool to associate both runtimes because you can do things in Ruby that you can't really do in Objective-C. And <laughs> in 2006, uh, I gave a presentation here, uh, not here, but in uh, uh, Denver, about Ruby and, and Mac OS X, and especially about how, the, how we bridge Ruby and, and Objective-C. And Matt's right on this blog that after seeing this, uh, we end up feeling, wasn't Ruby made for Mac OS X? And this is really what we, most people at Apple have been thinking the same, because the Objective-C runtime and the Ruby runtime are very close. And by the way, the, the computer in the background is not a Mac. So. I, I don't know what kind of computer it is. It's black. And. Anyway. It's not Matt's computer, right? Uh, sorry, I, I picked this picture on Google, so. <laughs> That's not yours. And. This is the whole uh, development stack of Mac OS X. And it has four different layers, but the thing is that every layer depends on the layer above. And the Darwin layer is, is the core of the OS. It's completely free. And it includes the kernel, but also uh, the libc and some C APIs. And then we have the graphics and media layer, which is all the OpenGL and core image stuff. You can use that if you want to, custom, to customize animations or to do custom graphic stuff. And the application framework is the most important layer. It's, uh, in this layer, we'd find Cocoa, but you will also find things like address book or, or a search kit or things like that, a frameworks that you want to use to build your applications. And then there is the user experience layer, which includes 
uh, things like Spotlight or Quick Look. And it's there if you want to, uh, to improve the global user experience. But the nice thing is that these four layers are written in C and Objective-C. And in Leopard, we are supporting them in Ruby. And we are supporting them with a project called Ruby Coco. And Ruby Coco is a bridge between uh, C and Objective-C versus the Ruby 1.8 runtime. So it means that from Ruby, you can call C APIs and Objective-C APIs. So Objective-C is purely dynamic, so uh, it's very easy. But for C, uh, C is completely static. So to do that, we have a project called Bridge Support, which uh, documents all the static APIs in XML files. And then at runtime, we reconstruct the Ruby APIs. So you can access C constants, C function pointers, C structures, and you can call any C function that you want. And we are using uh, FFI for this. And vice versa, the C runtime can call you, uh, can call Ruby. And this is a very old project created in 2001. And it has been rewritten recently to be stable. And it's, it's been led with Mac OS 10.5, and it's supported. So you can use it today, and it won't disappear. But uh, how many of you have Macs here? You can raise your hand. Oh, that's a lot of people, except Matt. <laughs> and how many of you are uh, familiar with Mac development in general? So do you know Coco? Not so many. Maybe 10 hands or 15 hands. And that's, that's true, because uh, if you're looking at the, the consumer applications written in Ruby, there are not that much. I think there are only two applications. There is LimeChat, an IRC client, and Blogo, which is an application to write blogs. And both are really cool applications and are written entirely in Ruby. But it looks like Ruby developers don't want to write Mac applications. On the other side, if you look at the web development in Ruby, uh, how many of you are familiar with web development in Ruby? That's mostly everyone, I think. Well, not those people in the background. And that, that's completely true, because uh, there are many, many web applications that are using Ruby, many consumer applications. I just pick some applications on Google. I don't know really if they use Ruby or not, but uh, that, that, that's very different. And why exactly? So besides the fact that uh, the, the web market is definitely bigger than the Mac market, and not everyone on Earth is using a Mac yet, I think there are, there are two big reasons. The first one is that Coco is a very hard framework to, to apprehend for Ruby developers. It's a huge framework. And the problem is that Coco was written for Objective-C, and especially it uses very verbose method names, which are completely different from Ruby APIs. As an example, if you want to write code to, to show this Hello World window in, in Ruby Coco, so not in Objective-C, so it's a very simple window with a title, and then there is a button. And when you click the button, it, say, it says um, Hello World. And you have to write that. Uh, which is very, which is huge. Is it really Hello World? And building the window looks very complicated. And then you need to create the button. And the problem is that when you create a button by default in Coco, it's not the Aqua button. It's a square button, like in Java. And if you want to connect some code, when the user clicks the button, you need to create an object, define a method on the object, and then you need to pass the object and the name of the message. And it, this is very complex to use for most uh, people, I think. And the second reason is that Ruby 1.8 uh, Ruby and Ruby Coco have some performance and design issues to be used intensively in, inside Coco. Oops. And the first problem is that it's a bridge. So uh, Ruby 1.8 and Objective-C are two different runtimes. And we need to bridge them. It means, that, it means that if you want to access a Cocoa object from Objective-C, uh, in Objective-C from Ruby, we need to create a proxy object that will forward the messages. It also means that every time you pass an object from Ruby to Objective-C, it has to be converted. This is extremely costly. 
And although every time you create classes in Ruby, we have to create the same classes in Objective-C, and vice versa. If you want to access classes in Objective-C, we need to create the equivalent classes in Ruby. This is very complex to maintain, and we have lots of problems with Ruby Coco because of that. The second problem is that the messaging syntax is different. In Objective-C, uh, methods, uh, methods argument can have names, so there is some kind of method uh, argument names in Objective-C. And in Ruby, uh, there, is no, there is no support for that. And I will come back to this problem later. The third problem is that the Ruby 1.8 runtime has green threads and is not a reentrant. So the green thread problem means that there are lots of problems with Coco because Coco expects you to call uh, from, uh, uh, from different POSIX threads. And there are so many bugs because of that. So we had to, to hack the runtime, and it's very ugly. And the second problem is that it's not reentrant. So you cannot really call the Ruby 1.8 runtime from different threads. You need to lock every time. Uh, it's a bit of a problem. And finally, both runtimes have different garbage collectors. So this is very complex to maintain when you have a bridge and two different garbage collectors. It means that one garbage collector has to rule the other. And also, it, it's, a, it's an increase in memory. And the answer to, the, to all these problems is, is MacRuby that we, we created uh, earlier this year. And MacRuby is Ruby 1.9 uh, re-implemented on top of uh, core Mac OS X technologies, like the Objective-C runtime and garbage collector, and the core foundation library. Core foundation is the, the, is the, foundation, is the foundation of the foundation framework. So basically, it's a, it's a very foundation framework. Like, uh, every string that you create in Coco are actually uh, core foundation strings. It's the very basic of everything on all the frameworks. And it has been in development uh, since, the, the, uh, since a year. Actually, it's, it's a pretty young project. But we, plan, we want to release uh, the first production-ready version by the end of the year. By production-ready, I mean you can, you can really use it to write applications. And uh, MicroB is meant to solve the, the Ruby problems, the Ruby 1.8 and Ruby Coco problems. And where is the bridge? Uh, since we are using the Objective-C runtime, there is no bridge anymore because when you create a class in Ruby, it's automatically an Objective-C class. There is no need to create, uh, to maintain the different class model between two, the two worlds. And every time you create a Ruby method, it's automatically an Objective-C method on the runtime. And we use the Objective-C uh, runtime to dispatch calls. So every, even if you do, you write a method in Ruby and call it, it will go through the, the Objective-C runtime. And finally, every Ruby object are, is, is an Objective-C object by default. So there is no need to convert types. This is very good for performance. And in 2008, February, Matt, Matt said, uh, just after we announced the MacRuby project, that if uh, MacRuby succeeds, there is no doubt Ruby will establish itself both in name and in reality as the official scripting language of OS X. And this is really true because we are not talking about the bridge anymore. It's really, um, the language is really based on, on the core OS technologies. And by the way, uh, Matt still looks the same in 2008. <laughs> and it's still not a Mac in the background. And so this is a, a Matt Ruby 1.9. One, one so I separated it in five different uh, parts. You have the parser, and then you have the YARF, which is the virtual machine. And then the runtime is uh, responsible to dispatch calls and things like that, and also allocate memory. So it has the garbage collector. And then you have the, the built-in classes, like strings, uh, array, hash. And then you have the standard library, which is all in Ruby and a big library. And MacRuby today looks like this. So we modify the parser to support name arguments. 
so that you can call uh, Objective C in a very uh, nice syntax. On the other side, uh, we didn't do Chiarf uh, because we think it's a great uh, virtual machine. On the runtime side, however, we rewrote the runtime so that we use the Objective C runtime and we use the Objective C garbage collector to allocate and collect memory. So it's a, it's a completely different runtime. And the built-in classes, also, we, we rewrote them so that every string that you create in Ruby is a core foundation string. Same thing for uh, array and ashes. And on the stdlib side, we didn't modify uh, a single line in the standard library. So we can run, for example, IRB or rake. Uh, we, we start to run uh, gems, but. Uh, and we are including a library called hotcoco, which I will uh, discuss a little bit after. But let me show you some demo. So first, uh, I'm starting Mac IRB, which is uh, IRB, the, the, same, the same IRB, but we are running it uh, via uh, Mac Ruby. Oh, can, maybe I can. OK. And the funny thing is that, oops, that's better. So in. So it's, it's Ruby, by the way. And the funny thing is that in MacRuby, um, so uh, all objects are actually uh, subclasses of the NS object, which is the, the root object of Coco. And for example, even a fixed num, a fixed num is actually in, in MacRuby a subclass of the NS number class in Coco. And if, for example, I create a string, then I ask for the class. It says it's an NS mutable string, which is weird because it's not string anymore. And if you type string, it says it's an NS mutable string. <laughs> so, so actually, it's true. So. <laughs> So uh, it's an NS mutable string in the way you can mutate the string. In Coco, the, you have uh, mutable and non-mutable objects. So uh, this is my string. And I can call, for example, upcase. That works. And, but if I ask for the encoding, which is a one line uh, method, it says uh, it's a Mac OS Roman encoding because the string is only ASCII characters. But if I ask for the encoding list, to get the list of all encodings, it is, whoops. <laughs> OK, let's try again. Oh, that's better. And this is the list of. Uh, all encodings that we support through the core foundation framework. And the nice thing about, uh, if you ask, for example, the method on, on the string, you will see that it responds to all the Ruby methods. But we, we saw that we have, we have this ns mutable string class. So we don't show the, the Objective-C methods by default. If you want to see them, you need to pass the second parameter as true. And here we have lots and lots of methods. That's all the methods uh, a string re can respond to. And that's a lot. And if we want only the methods for the, for the, the string class, we can strip them. And we can see that we have lots of uh, methods that are quite strange, but for example, if I, uh, for example, like uppercase string, 
if I call foo.upercastring, I get foo. So it's exactly the same method as the upcase Ruby method that you know. But there are some methods with a semicolon in the name. And these, these are the, the Objective-C method that I was talking about. So for example, there is uh, uh, strings by replacing occurrences of strings with strings. So this method will replace all occurrences of the given string with the other given string. And we can try that. If I do uh, hello rubyconf, and then I can uh, with string mm, Florida. And it's hello Florida. So here we are calling an Objective-C method, but we are passing uh, two Ruby strings. But the funny thing is that these are Cocoa strings, so they are not converted. And calling this method is as fast as calling a Ruby method that you would actually define. And uh, the funny thing is that all strings in MacRuby so are Cocoa strings, and and we and in uh, in Core Foundation, our strings are using ICU to 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 apply transformations from uh, from one char set to the other, but it, they can also convert characters. And if I type arigato and then transform Latin to hiragana, I get some kinds of bytes. And actually, this is a Unicode byte, so. If I put them, I see the Japanese string. And this is really cool. This is, this is really a Unicode string. It says UTF-16. And so uh, since we are on MacRB, so we, we have access to all the Cocoa frameworks on the system. And there is a nice one called Scripting Bridge. which is a, an Objective-C framework to communicate with uh, applications through Apple events. And the main class of this framework is SB applications. And if we ask for the methods, we can see that this class uh, responds to these methods. And let's, let's try to connect to iTunes, for example. Oops. Ah. Uh, iTunes. And here we go. And the funny thing is that scripting bridge creates Objective-C classes on the fly uh, when you actually provide the bundle identifier. And, but in MacRuby, there is no support. We don't need to support that. It's because we are, we are really native to the runtime. So there is no need to create proxy classes. In, in Ruby Coco, it's really a pain to maintain this, this framework. And now that we have the application, we can ask for the current track. And it says it's an iTunes track. If I look at the class of this object, it says it's a track which inherits from item, which is an SB object, then an NS object, and then it includes the kernel module. So this is funny. This is really a pure Objective-C object that we are working with uh, on IRB. There is no Ruby stuff there. And I can ask for the name. Oh, this is a, this is Daft Punk. And 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 these are all the methods that our application can uh, respond to. It's not that much, and there is the play pause method that should start iTunes. Ah, it works. And you can pause it, replay, 
or oh, it's 100. You can choose the volume or stuff like that. But whoops. <laughs> So if, if we go back to this method, it returns a, a string. But the funny thing is that if we ask for the class of the string, it says it's an NS string. So it's not an NS mutable string, but it's still a string in Ruby. The fact, but the problem is that you cannot really transform it. And if I do strip, for example, it will say, ah, you cannot modify the immutable string. So in order to modify an NS string, you need to make a mutable copy of it. And there are methods for that. Uh, um, oops. <laughs> and I think that's all for the IRB session. Um, I think we have, we have time to. I'm going to create a small uh, UI for this for this code. So now I'm going to demonstrate the uh, Xcode integration with MacRuby. So let's start with a new project that we'll call the uh, iTunes controller and like that. Cool. And here we have our uh, controller and A. I'm not lucky today. Not working. Mm. I don't know what's happening. It looks like my computer is completely crazy today. This one. Oh, I still have this this project. <laughs> and so th uh, this is a. Uh, I wrote that uh, a few minutes ago. But it's funny that I cannot create new projects. It might be a bug in my machine. But this is a. This is a, a Cocoa application written in MacRuby that actually controls iTunes using the the scripting bridge. And here we have the framework scripting bridge call that I just did in, in IRB. And this is the, the line that I type as well to get the, an application, the iTunes application. And here I have all my, uh, my actions for the user interface. Um, which is here. So I have a, I have a label here, then I have Play, stop, previous, next, and then the slider. Oh, it's really bad that I cannot demo that. And uh, anyway, the application works, but. And I can play. Ah, you can control the volumes and things like that. So it works, but. Ah, I'm sorry. And, and yeah, it's really too bad that it didn't work. So, um, so we have Hot Cocoa in in, um, in Mac Ruby now, and Hot Cocoa is a is a thin Ruby layer on top of Cocoa, and it's it's actually a builder-like API to allow you to build uh, UI components using using Ruby syntax. It's 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 very elegant. And it's written by Rich Kimmer, which is somewhere here, I don't know. It's here. Thank you. <laughs> and if you remember the Ruby Coco Hello World uh, sample that I wrote, and if you want the Mac Ruby version, it's actually only, uh, we only have to, to change two lines. But the rest is still the same. It's still Coco. But uh, with Hot Coco, it's, it's better because you have to write that. It's, it's way, way better. So, for example, when you want to build a window, you call the window method. And you pass some arguments, and it will create your window. 
And if you want to create a button that then connects an action, you pass a Ruby proc object, a block. This is really rubbish. It's not Coco anymore. It's, it's, uh, it's hot. <laughs> and if you want to know more about hot Coco, you should, you should see a rich session uh, tomorrow. And in the future of MacRuby, there are three things that we would like to do. Uh, first of all, we would like to have multi-core support. It means that we want MacRuby to use all the cores of your CPU. So to do that, we have to rewrite the runtime so that it can be uh, completely reentrant. So it's a, it's a very uh, big challenge. And on the second time, we would like to introduce a justice time compilation some, somewhere in the virtual machine. And finally, we would like to make MacRuby uh, an OSA language. Uh, OSA stands for uh, Open Scripting Architecture. So it's really the base of AppleScript. And if we make MacRuby an OSA language, it will be the same as AppleScript technically. It means that in mail, for example, you will be able to write your, uh, your mail rules in Ruby and not in AppleScript anymore. And it means that you can also control uh, applications natively and not passing through a bridge anymore. And maybe in, in, a, in 210, <laughs> Matt will say, I'm a Mac, I don't know. Uh, if you want to know more about the project, you can uh, go to the macruby.org website. And oh, we have a Twitter account now, macruby, if you want to track the project or things like that. And don't forget the, the Hot Coco uh, presentation of Rich. Uh, tomorrow, if you want to see how Coco, hot Coco works, and that's all. Do you have any questions? Uh, okay. Sorry. I can't hear you. Sorry. iPhone. iPhone. Uh, uh, I cannot answer this question. I'm sorry. Ne next question. <laughs> yeah. Um, on the when you were doing the Xcode app and showing the GUI, yeah. you, I noticed you didn't do any outlets. Are those just automatic for me, or? Yeah. So uh, so it's really too bad that it didn't work, but. Yeah, you don't have to specify outlets anymore. Uh, awesome. you, you have to create uh, accessors. Ruby accessors will be outlets by default. And uh, actions will be methods with the sender par parameter. So it's completely transparent now. Wow. Uh, yes? Who else is working on MacRuby with you? Uh, sorry? Who else is working on MacRuby with you? Uh, it's only me right now. Wow. Right now. <laughs> yes? said that you wanted to see this added to uh, OS 10 possibly in the future? Yeah. Would this replace the, the Nats Ruby interpreter or would it be an additional <coughs> option? It will be an additional project. It, we cannot replace uh, Matt's interpreter because it's, uh, it's a Ruby 1.8 and we cannot break compatibility. Yeah, any more questions? Yep. Uh, how, so back to me. How difficult would it be to say take the core of MacRuby and just compile it with uh, GCC Objective-C? Take the core of MacRuby and recompile. Yeah, just say take it on Linux and compile with GCC Objective-C. So uh, it should work, except that uh, the the garbage collector has not been ported yet. So it's it's. But it, it, once we have the garbage collector, it's going to be. We we would like to release the sources of the garbage collector soon. So once it will be released, then we can make a port in Linux and even in Windows. Yeah? Uh, how does Ruby spec run on MacRuby? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I think that it, it works. So the M spec project can work with MacRuby. And that's all I know. I, I would like to run the Ruby specs project as well, because it is great. But currently, we are trying to stabilize the project. So first, we get stable, and then we, we start to pass the tests. As, as far as I know, there are far fewer 1.9 specs, which is what you would run. 
Oh, there are only there are already one one nine specs. You zero one nine implementation. Oh, nice. That's great. Well, thank you.